producing next generation corporations. And we rice usually have a very strong dormancy. So that's again, we can keep in the soil uh, and uh, um, the germinate until the, the favorite time. And even though some uh, weed rice do not have a, uh, the dormancy, that they evolve something new, replace the dormancy. So this is very uh, smart. And Norman and I, we, we have published one paper just describe this quickly evolved uh, uh, mechanism that replaced the dormancy. And also, uh, they have a red pear, uh, pear cup, a seed coat, and a bone. So those are the general um, characters of weedy rice. And weedy rice is really very bad for weed in, in, in rice field, infesting uh, in, in, in rice fields all over the world. And it cares in Asia, in America, South and North, and Africa, and South Europe. It particularly linked with the, the direct seeding. Uh, before, when people doing transplanting, you have less weeds, but now, since the labor problem, then people usually turn to direct seeding, then it creates a lot of weed rice problem. So you can see that this is a field infested by, by weed rice. Farmer has have no uh, harvest at all uh, in that case. And you can see this is the word that the, uh, distribution of weed rice. You can see that no matter where you find a uh, rice fields, Weedy rice will be there sooner or later. Um, weedy rice also causes lots of uh, heavy damage, uh, yield damage of, of crop rice. And uh, it also affects the quality of, of the uh, crop because of this, this uh, red seed coat. If uh, certain uh, commercial uh, varieties or, or rice sold in the market with this red uh, weedy rice mixed in, then the quality is immediately affected. So, uh, and also uh, wheat rice, it's very difficult to control wheat rice. Yeah. And uh, as long as uh, it appears in the rice field after some time, and then it becomes a, 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 a nightmare for the farmers. Okay. So this is a, an estimation of the um, correlation between yield loss and the wheat rice occurrence in the field. You can see that um, if there's no wheat rice, the rice yield is very high, and then if you have a wheat rice occur in different frequencies, then it can completely damage the, the yield. And wheat rice can also lodge, it, and then we really make uh, the farmer can feel very difficult to, to harvest. So that's why it's really wow. damaged. In China, in many provinces, we find wheat rice. So it's from north to south. Wheat rice occur very very badly it caused a lot of uh, damage up to 100%. And this year we had a team to go collection in, in the fields. And then students told us, some farmers gave up the rice field because the wheat rice is too many. Yeah, so then we have no harvesting. So this is the problem caused by uh, wheat rice. So wheat rice, why is wheat rice so successful? Yeah. And one of the reasons is uh, wheat rice is, can very, uh, they are so smart, they compete with crop in a very smart way. And the second part is we have a dormancy or replacement mechanism of dormancy. So we can hide in the soil and wait for the best time for, for Germany and make the, make the trouble. And the wheat rice also, also has a great genetic diversity and morphological diversity. So uh, you can find all kinds of forms. So you have to find different ways to control them. Yeah. So if you use pesticides, the, the, sorry, the, the herbicide and the manual uh, removal, and uh, all kind of means, but because they, they, they have a very much uh, diversity, so it's, it's very difficult to use one way to kill all the weedy rice. And of course, the seed shattering uh, make them really um, can um, reproduce very successfully and, and disperse very successfully. And in very, another uh, very important character is the weedy rice can mimic their parent, the, the, the crops. So farmers, finally, they cannot distinguish between uh, wheat rice and, uh, and crop rice. That, that is because of the gene flow and introgression. So wheat rice can get the gene from the crop and make them look like crop, but it's not the crop. So all these characters seem uh, make wheat rice kind of, uh, can fast evolve uh, in, a, in a all kinds of uh, environmental conditions. So this is just to show a few uh, slides uh, to see the, the morphological characters. You can see 
you can find all wheat rice. Some are look almost like rice, but some are look like the old, uh, wild rice. So you can see that with logic, this panicle from almost like rice and almost like wild rice. So you can find all kinds of uh, differences uh, in, in all characters. So that's why it made wheat rice very difficult to control. And I think this is also because, uh, because of the gene flow. Yeah. Um, so this is crop rice, this wheat rice, and this is white rice. Then we can, the gene flow occur always among the three things. So, um, for example, wheat rice and crop rice, uh, white rice and co cultivated rice, if they cross and they produce wheat rice. And different, different variety of wheat rice, when they cross, they also make a kind of a wheat rice. So uh, this makes things uh, even more difficult, yeah. So that's why uh, gene flow really contribute to the uh, quick adaptive evolution of wheat rice. And then, people, since the transgenic rice uh, are studied and developed in China, people really think about whether uh, the transgene flow to wheat rice or to the white rice will make a big trouble and, uh, for the environment. So, um, in China, we have a very big, uh, intensive um, transgenic um, program for develop uh, transgenic rice. So, for example, we have an insect resistant uh, rice, or transgenic rice, herbicide resistant, disease resistant, and drought and salt resistant, and high yield and high quality uh, transgenic rice, and also nitrogen fixation and uptake in high efficient uptake of the uh, nutrient uh, type of transgenic rice. So all these uh, transgenes, people are really worried if it comes to the wheat rice population, to the white rice population, what will really happen to make rice evolve much faster, okay? Um, actually, in, in, in two year, year 2009, China already deregulated two transgenic uh, rice varieties. Yeah, one is called Huawei number one, and another is uh, Sanyu uh, 63, yeah. But because of the public resistance, yeah, so the government finally had to decide not to commercialize these two varieties. So that's why uh, not only science, uh, sci scientists concerns those things, public concern, and then they, they can influence the government policies. So the question is, can transient flow to wild relatives, including weedy rice, can really cause some ecological and evolutionary impact. And what is this impact? So to, to have to answer these questions, we actually we studied crop to wild gene flow uh, and in different design. Our, our study indicated that up to 3% of the gene flow could become to the, weed, uh, to the wild rice. Other people study indicated even higher frequencies. So that means that the gene from crop will definitely come to wild rice. So this is a, a picture I took in Nepal. You can see that this is cultivated rice fields. Those are still white populations. And you, in the border area, you see a lot of uh, intermediate type, which is out of the class. And we also studied the crop to weed, to weed uh, gene flow. We use a herbicide and chlorine trans transgenic rice and uh, to test the, the frequency of gene flow. And then what we find is up to 0.5 uh, percent of a uh, per generation. So that means that if the gene flow can accumulate, so that means that the gene really can uh, get a lot in the weed rice populations. And then um, we have also done some other uh, gene flow work, use ordinary rice varieties and the uh, weed, uh, weed populations, and try to understand what is the natural uh, gene flow in those populations. And then we find the actually the frequency from from the frequency of crossing is really, really, really high. And then it's correlated the outcrossing rate and the diversity observed heterozygosity, or sorry, it's a, they have a correlations, a positive correlations. That means that when, when we derive get, get the genes from the crop, they will change the genetic structure and also the uh, heterozygosity, yeah, number of heterozygosity. Another very recently published paper to indicate that because you know in China, in the south part we grow we, uh, indica rice, in the north part we grow uh, japonica rice. 
And then in some area like in Jiangsu province, which is in the middle of China, they start transfer from Indica rice to uh, Japonica rice. And such agriculture change affected the uh, weedy rice. For example, this is uh, the, the south weedy rice. They are closely related to Indica rice. North rice is, uh, the, the weedy rice is closely uh, to the northeast rice, to the Jap uh, Japonica rice. But in this new area, you can see that the genetic diversity is such a huge variation. So you can find, uh, through the gene flow, some individuals already turned to, into a, a Japonica type of weed rice. So that means that really the, the gene flow will affect. From the genetic structure, you can also see that this new area has a completely quite different uh, uh, gen uh, genetic structure. Yeah. And uh, th this is from this area. So uh, the general impression for, for, the, uh, uh, for the gene flow is that uh, the trans gene definitely will come to weedy rice sooner or later if, uh, if we commercialize, we, uh, commercialize transgenic rice. So, um, and also the, the, the gene flow will affect the genetic structure diversity level of uh, weedy rice populations. So urgent study is really needed. And then to understand really uh, what is the impact of crop weedy, uh, crop wild gene flow, we say if a transient comes to wide weedy population, it will change the fitness, either increase the fitness and then will in increase the invasiveness of the of this weedy type. Other hand, on the other hand, if it decrease the, the fitness, it will uh, probably cause some extinction of the wild population, small populations. Yeah. So no matter what, those two situations will cause some evolutionary and ecological consequence of the, of the gene flow. So the, the, pro, the point is to really understand the fitness of the, of the transgene, yeah, what, what they will cause. So under this uh, kind of a design or thinking, we made a very intensive fitness uh, study of the transgene rice and uh, with weedy rice. Yeah. So we, we made a process use non-transgenic and transgenic to, to weedy rice or white relatives. And then we compare these two, and we also compare the segregates uh, with the transient and without transient till now, uh, the seven uh, generations. Okay. So um, the result is showing that the fitness will be affected by the transient. Yeah, those are the, some publications from there. I just quickly show uh, two examples. For example, like, like in the F2, under very low insect pressure, of course, uh, you don't see very much. Um, uh, I mean, the, the insect uh, index is is changing uh, differently. Um, but for some genes, it's not so uh, significant. For some genes, because we have a CBTI and a, a BT genes, but under natural insect pressure, the, you can see that the transient will bring some uh, some benefit. Yeah. For the F3, it's the same. It's the same situation. Okay. Um, so please give us an idea that under low insect pressure, the transient doesn't really give very much, uh, how to say, fitness benefit. But under very uh, natural insect or high insect pressure, the transient will bring some uh, the, the benefit. The, and the question is, um, if we we are, we are thinking of that in the, if in the future the whole field will trans, uh, grow with transgenic crops, the general insect pressure will, will be re, uh, very low. So in that case, you can say that um, if in an environment, <coughs> alien environment, you have a very low insect pressure, then the transgene will not really bring uh, very much uh, uh, fitness benefit. So that means uh, the, uh, the insect resistant transgenes might not really cause big troubles. But the problem is uh, for, the, for the herbicide resistant gene. So uh, last year we published one paper about the fitness of the herbicide resistant. Uh, and actually this gene, the EPS gene, is from the selected or isolated from the rice. And then just added a high expression promoter to <coughs> make it uh, produce more EPSPS. So suddenly you can see that the EPSPS level is much higher than the non-transgenic uh, shown by different ways. And uh, the problem is, is that uh, if without spring, 
the uh, herb science, you can see that seed germination of the transgenic is much, much higher than non-transgenic. And some of the uh, anom anom uh, acid also increased. And this is the, the rate of the photosynthesis. And then all these changes on the lead also lead to the, the fitness of, or the fecundity. So you can see the number of seeds production. We have uh, four different uh, combinations of wheat rice in the F2 and F3 the high uh, progenies. You can see that the transient positive, positive and transient negative, they show such a huge significance differences. So with those uh, ideas in our mind, I make, uh, like to make a short conclusion. We rest the occur globally you know, in the whole world. The transient, it's must, or <coughs> there's no way to stop the transient go from crop to we rice. And the crop weed integration will influence uh, the adapt adaptation of, of weed rice. And the transient fitness is very complex. You can see, the, for example, like BT is not really very much a big problem, but for herbicide resistant or other, uh, for example, like drought or salt, might be, uh, have a different uh, things. And we are also worried about the, tran the transient aggressive, the transgressive segregation plus the transient, if they combine together, probably they will make some uh, different impact. So we think that more study of the evolution of biology, especially uh, concerned about the weedy crop uh, transient flow, really need to, to be studied. And then uh, it is very difficult to control the gene flow, but we have to understand more about the fitness. Uh, finally, we, we, we feel that probably we can use the transient mitigation system. And recently we have done some work. We silenced, silenced the, the shattering gene and uh, to put this shattering, uh, silence shattering gene into crop rice. And then we crossed the, the, the rice and the weedy rice, and we found significant reduction of the shattering for the weedy rice. So probably this is the way in the future to manage the uh, weedy rice problem uh, for, the, for the agricultural production. Yeah. So this is F2, F1, between uh, weedy rice and crop, crop rice. You can see that this is the weedy rice. So then you can see the transient positive is much lower than transient uh, negative. And in F2 is the same, okay? So even though we have only a few transgenic uh, events, probably if we really find, uh, do more, then we can really find a way to stop the, or to mitigate the, the impact of transgenic. So this is uh, what I want to say. Thank you very much for this is picture from China. Thank you. Really interesting, um, exciting work. Um, I, I had a uh, the last couple slides about the silencing of the shattering locusts were quite interesting. To me. And I'm, I'm a little bit puzzled. So about the genetics of the silenced shattering locust, is it acting as a dominant allele? Because usually silenced genes act as are recessive, and so does it actually cause does it act in a dominant way in hybrids? Yeah, this gene, uh, this. Uh,
So would you focus mostly on the adverse effects of inflow? Uh, but I was wondering if there is any good things about the meteorized genes uh, getting into the crop populations. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a um, that is really a very good question. Actually, uh, before the transgenic uh, problem comes to 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 the, to, uh, to the water of the world, people really use uh, meteorites as germplasm because in meteorites there are some good traits. For example, like um, more resistant to insects and more resistant to, 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 to the diseases. Yeah. And also some special um, nutrients compounds or some medicinal, even some medicinal compounds. So this has been really used as a, as a germ person in rice breeding. Yeah. So, um, so actually, uh, uh, the crop also gets some useful genes from the weedy rice in, in natural system or in natural situation. Yeah. So then how to balance to use the weedy rice as a germplasm and also to, to prevent the uh, natural, very strong natural selective gene going to the weedy rice to make some uh, troubles. This is what we need to, to think about in the future. I don't know if 